It's been labelled a week of horror. Four ghastly incidents of domestic violence in four days in southeast Queensland have galvanised politicians into promising decisive action. Two women and a child are dead, a gunman has taken his own life and another woman is recovering in hospital after a series of separate attacks. One case has prompted an urgent review as it's been revealed the victim sought police help in the days before she was attacked and killed, yet she was turned away. A number of families are now in shock and asking what more could have been done to save her life. Josh Bavis reports. A week of family violence has left Queenslanders shocked and numb. What's been happening is so in your face that people feel we must do something about this. It was a week uh, like I haven't seen before. It began with a mother finding her six-year-old daughter dead in their million-dollar Brisbane home. Her mining executive husband was charged with their daughter's murder and attempted murder of their other daughter. A 49-year-old woman has been shot dead in a fast food restaurant on the Gold Coast. The By week's end, in a scene played out in front of patrons in a McDonald's cafe opposite Movie World on the Gold Coast, a woman came in screaming for help. He came inside and just went to the woman who was there and just put his arm around her chest and shot her. She was shot dead at point blank by her husband, who then turned the gun on himself. Karina Locke died on the floor, while the father of her four children, Stephen Locke, died in hospital 24 hours later. It was just going down, 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 down. And the woman, he was cutting the woman, and she was curled up on the ground trying to protect herself. On the same day, another woman was attacked by her husband who was wielding a machete on a Brisbane suburban street. It was only quick-thinking neighbours who intervened and saved her. And last night, more than 100 people were left grieving for 24-year-old Tara Brown, who police allege was run off the road by her partner before being bashed so badly she was left brain dead and later died in hospital. The horrendous event was captured on a neighbour's security camera. Former Bandidos bikey Lionel Patea, who's the father of her child, was charged with her murder. If you are a woman out there at the moment and you are in fear of your life, please ring triple zero immediately. Tara Brown did exactly that. She went to the Southport police station just days ago, but was turned away. I do feel really angry. Um, just for her family's sake, you know. Um, no one ever wants to go through what they are going through at the moment. Her close friend, Aroa Griffiths, remembers Tara as an encourager and a loving mother. A lot of parents and a lot of mums will understand, you know, Children are so precious to us and just not having a mum and being so young too. Um, I just can't explain the feeling because they were so close, you know, they were best friends and now she's just going to have memories of her mum um, but come, not coming home to, to her mum will probably just shatter her like a lot of kids, you know. Um. <sighs> Queensland Premier Anastasia Palaszczuk has asked police to investigate why Tara Brown left the police station without support. There are incidents where sometimes police are not acting fast enough. So let's get that matter investigated. But if we can do more, we must do more. Did police let Tara Brown down? Look, uh, I'm remiss at this point in time to, to comment. I think it would be unfair to the investigators to speculate on what their inquiries might find. Deputy Commissioner Brett Pointing is overseeing how police deal with domestic violence and what needs to change. We need to uh, move very quickly on ensuring that 
where uh, serious criminal matters such as assaults occur as part of DV, that we're engaging our detectives through the CI branch or the Child Protection Investigation Unit to ensure that those investigations are expedited. There's also another piece of work that we're doing around ensuring that domestic violence protection orders are served as soon as possible. What is the cultural attitude of police towards DV matters? Do they see it as important crime or do they see it as distraction from their primary crime right, fighting role? Uh, you know, I think there's a lot of room for education now on how important it is to treat this as a serious crime issue. Former police officer turned university lecturer Dr Terry Goldsworthy says the police response to domestic violence is still far from adequate. I look at the, the reaction that we had when we had the bike you brought Broad Beach, uh, you know, the reaction was instantaneous, uh, the resources were put into it. Every day in Queensland, police respond to 200 call-outs to domestic violence. That's about 70,000 a year, 30% more than four years ago. It's a huge uh, body of work that gets carried out every day. And in the main, our officers do a, a wonderful job. Uh, and one of the great things that I've seen change in my service, my service of almost 38 years, has been the high degree of commitment towards protecting uh, the community uh, and domestic violence is at the very top of that. OK, where are you calling from? So are you safe there at the moment? Diane Mangan runs DV Connect, a crisis call centre which receives hundreds of calls a day from around the state. The Queensland Government is set to boost funding to the centre in response to this week's tragedies. We're always busy, but the increased calls have definitely been in response to what's happened, the tragedy, the media attention. Many people are phoning in response to what they've seen or read. The state already pledged $31 million extra to help fight DV over four years. Sadly, that's far too late for the victims who lost their lives this week. She was just that, that girl, that pretty, pretty beautiful girl that everyone knew and she was just the best mother. Josh Bavis reporting and if you'd like to talk to someone about domestic or family violence, you can call the National Counselling Helpline 1800 RESPECT, which is 1800 737 732. And don't forget, the police emergency line is triple O.